with you, so I really can't complain about nothing. My bad, man. I had to go pick up my kids. <laughs> oh, man, no worries. Yeah. No, no <laughs> worries. Get them something to eat. I'm like, oh, okay, we got to get something to eat. Okay. Well, we're glad you're here, man. I'm stoked to have you. EJ in the back there? Yeah, that was EJ. The man himself. Hi. Well, Hey. What's up, EJ? How you doing, buddy? Good. How are you? How are you? I'm good. If you're good, I'm good. <laughs> well, hey, I'm super excited to have you, Pooh. Pooh and I were teammates. I gave a little introduction before, but um, one of the best teammates I ever had the chance to play with, not only as a player, but just as a person. Um, who knew everybody on campus. That was one of the things I really respected. He knew the lunch ladies. He knew the people around the custodians, the janitor. Who knew everybody. And everybody likes Pooh. I don't know anybody. I've never met anybody that had a negative word to say about the guy. He's just an infectiously positive player when he's on the floor. So he did big things at University of Portland and has gone on to do even bigger things. Still takes the time to respond to text messages from me and has never once given me a big timer mentality. And that's part of the reason why he's so successful as an entrepreneur, as a basketball player, as a husband, as a father. He's doing big things. So I'm really excited to have him joining us. So let's get how, X Factor. How are you doing tonight? Man, listen, I'm living the dream. You guys know I say it every single week, and I mean it every single week, man. I'm living the dream. I'm really blessed. I'm happy to be here. Uh, you know, my guy, Pooh, hopped on. I really appreciate, you know, being my for for connecting us. It's going to be an awesome show. Uh, we got a lot of great things coming, so stay tuned. <laughs> for real. Awesome, Pooh. Well, hey, first off, congratulations on all your success. I always love seeing you. We were talking a little bit earlier. You're a Tesla guy. Is that right? Yes, man. Uh Hey, you know, I'm a, I'm a Model X Tesla guy. Had my Tesla for two years now, but for some reason, thing doors don't want to open. <laughs> uh, it, it's, I'm starting to get, now I'm starting, sorry, Elon Musk, if you're listening, but man, my Tesla tripping right now. Man. Damn. We got you loud and clear. I can hear you loud and clear, Pooh. That, well, um, we're going to talk a little bit about your Portland days. Tell us a little bit about how you decided to go to University of Portland. What was the reason? I know a little bit about Holton and the connections. And then we're going to come back and talk about kind of the L.A. connections and some of the camps and stuff you've done. Um, yeah. So we're just going to chop it up here for a little bit and ask some questions and try to glean some knowledge from the wisdom that you're going to provide us tonight. So... Tell us a little bit about how you chose University of Portland. Well, um, man, uh, I, I'll never forget. It was a time um, my AU coach, Dart Stamps, uh, I think this is like around January, February of 2002. Um, he, he had a three-way call with it was himself, Coach Holden, and myself. And... Um, just had a conversation. Coach Holden was on some like, and I knew Coach Holden previously from UCLA, you know, because I used to go to UCLA camp and um, had the phone call. Um, Coach Holden was like, man, I'd love for you to come out. But at the same time, as I'm talking um, to Donald Wilson, Donald Wilson's another person who uh, we grew up together playing the same AAU, and we got on the call. And um, Coach Holden wanted us to take our trip together. So I'm like, oh, okay, cool. Like, me and Donald was already, you know, in, in communication for, like, since we was 12 years old. So um, that made sense for us to take that trip. We took our trip. Uh, never forget, uh, you know, we was able to, we went to a Blazers game. Then we went, you know, uh, you know, VIP and, I chopped it up with Damon Stoudemire, who ended up being a, you know, a, a cool person for me to, you know, relate to, uh, you know, him being a small point guard and, but, you know, us having conversations during my whole four years there, uh, it became um, a great opportunity. I, but I'll never forget 
well. So you know when you go in a hotel, I, well, I'm, 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 I'm not, like it, when you go to a hotel on a trip, they got your jerseys in, like laying across the bed, right? <laughs> so uh, we get there, we like, oh wow, cool. We go in our rooms. I get a knock on my door. Donald has the whole jersey and shorts <laughs> on, <laughs> and I'm like. like I'm like, bro, what you doing? He was like, whoa, bro, look at this, bro. I'm like, oh, okay. Uh, so the keeper one hundred. We go to the trip. Uh, we hanging out, I believe, with Carl. Uh, no, Eric Knight. Eric Knight was our host because you know Eric Knight is from LA. So uh, I already knew Eric Knight and his brother Billy Knight. Rest in peace. Um, so my connection with Eric, you know, this now he's taking us around. Uh, we go to a little, we go to a cool little party, um, and then the that next day, um, cause I think we were there for maybe a day and a half, I believe. Dino basically commits for both of us to keep <laughs> one, uh, and I'm like, I'm like, oh, okay, cool. You feel me, like. Because at the same time, you know, I had St. Mary's, um, Gonzaga was like on me a little bit. Uh, and I'm, I think maybe uh, Ohio State Fullerton and University of Montana. But, uh, but you know, I came back home, talked it over, then I ended up committing. So, uh, but Donald, Donald was definitely one of the main reasons of, me committing and but the beauty of it and I see Coach Brown on here. Uh Coach Brown came with us and I've been knowing Coach Brown since I was a, a young boy because him and my cousin are, are are real good friends. So by Coach Brown coming along like part of that, you know, part of that class with us too, like that made everything like click because you know, Coach Brown was definitely that person who, man, like, if it wasn't for Coach Brown, I don't even know how we would be able <laughs> to function because, like, we was always at his crib. Like, Coach Brown was, like, that, you know, of course he was our coach, but, man, he was teaching us so much about the game off the court wise. Like, it was like, dang, like, I'm glad we was able to have this balance and relationship and this protection, too, from not just Coach Holden, but also Coach Brown. So. For sure. Um, they treated you a little better on your recruiting visit than they did, than they treated me on mine. I don't <laughs> think they, they took it to McDonald's and they said, you can't get the supersized. Hey, 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 bro, so that's why that's why I was like, dang, my bad, because I don't know. I didn't know if you experienced the jersey he's been in the hotel room. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. Absolutely not. They did not have jerseys when I came on my visit for me. No, they did not. Mm -hmm. But uh, nah, it was definitely uh, that was a. Uh, and you know what, Craig? At the time, I didn't even pass the SAT at the time. So I committed to University of Portland in February, but I didn't even, I, I didn't find out I passed the, my SAT until June, you know? So I found out my test score is graduation day. And once I found out my test scores, I called, you know, Coach Holden, like, I'm, I'm, I'm in. <laughs> and I had flew out that next week for summer school. Like, Man, that's so that, awesome. So um, imagine your first day, once I stepped on campus that first day, of, he had a camp with Damon Stoudemire. So Coach Holden had a camp with Damon Stoudemire, and he had all the Portland Hoopers in there, from Brandon Brooks to Curtis Lincoln to uh, Brandon Lincoln. To, Brandon Lincoln. Uh, Thomas um, Gardner. Uh, Gardner, Chris Rogers. Uh, Aaron Miles, Michael um, Lee, man, man, you feel me? like it was so many of like the like Portland in that building, and that was that was like my introduction to like the whole city. So my bad. 
No, you made it, man. Well, I appreciate the fact you never treated me like less as a walk-on. I had <laughs> no a way. respect and I felt like I was a part of the team. And obviously I was trying to do everything I could to make us better. And there was times right. you and I would kind of get not chippy at each other, but I was trying to right. get you better. So yeah. not that I fouled you, but I wasn't as good as you were. So I was having to get a little grab. Right. Can you talk but the thing is, Brent, what you was doing, you know, we came in together. So um, it was another, it was another uh, guy that was trying to walk on as well. What was the, what was the guard name? Uh, um, that was Samario Clancy, Ryan Heil. No, no, no. Your freshman, your freshman, our freshman year. Um, it was like it was supposed to be like maybe a guard that was trying to walk on. White guy. Um, white guy. Maybe Ryan Heil, Tim Breen. No, no, no. <laughs> well, oh, Tim Breen, I think was our year, but now it was maybe Ryan Howe. But that was the one of the, the things I respected about you is like you really wanted it, like you really wanted that you know to be a part of the squad. Like that was your main thing of you having a great high school career. And when you chose University of Portland, you was on some like I'm I'm gonna make this team. So you know, like you wasn't backing down to me or Adam Quick or Casey Francis. You was like. I'm going to make sure y'all know who I am, you know, and that's why, you know, from our friendship from then to now, like I'm always respect because you was like, yo, like I'm going to make you going to earn you, you earned it. Like walk on or not. You feel me? Like you made sure that, you know, you brought that energy and made everybody better on and off the court. So. Man, I appreciate that. Poo. That means a lot, man. It really does. Cause I tried really hard to be the least talented player on the team. I busted my <laughs> ass. I won the sprints. I tried to help the team GPA. I lived with Donald. Coach Holt right. had me move in with Donald sophomore year, and I, he started <laughs> watching Seinfeld, and I started listening to some rap music, and he was telling me about the Dorsey-Crenshaw rivalries, and I was telling him about Medford-Grants Pass. And uh -huh. basketball is a unifying sport. So let me ask you a little bit about that. How has basketball brought you together? I know we, we, before you got here, we were watching a little clip of your wedding. And so I'm sure a lot of those guys are hoop guys. I think we saw Baron Davis in there. But talk right. about like kind of the relationships that have been created and kind of some of the original guys that taught you about the game of ball. Well, so like when it comes to LA basketball, I know Coach Brown will definitely, you know, have something to say about this as well. But, you know, um, I would go back to Dart Stamps. Like Dart Stamps was, you know, we all played under on his AAU program. It was called um, Values for a Better America, then changed to Top Prospects. So with Dart, Dart had, uh, he used to coach the high school team, but he made sure that the, like the guys in sixth grade, like, that we would hang out and know the ones who are up next, you know, to be somebody. So um, I was able to be connected with, with Baron Davis, like, and Baron Davis at that time, he, the high school guys used to really coach us because they would already be with Dart. So when Baron would come in, he'd be like, boom, or uh, Bobby Brown, who's LB, or uh, Bottoms, who's Brandon Heath, who's the number one, score in uh, Mountain West history, one-on-one. Y'all go one-on-one -on -one and this and that. So um, for that, to have that type of access to the number one players in the world, you feel me, like Baron Davis, they used to call him Baron Lord Davis. Like that was his nickname because, like, he was like, like he was Lord on the court. Like, he was the Lord of the ring. So, um, but then, you know, as our age group go, then, you know, here comes Trevor Reza, and here comes Hassan Adams, or here comes, man, um, Tyson Chandler, and this and that. So you will see people, Bobby Jones, who went to Washington. Like, you will see these people who um, end up becoming great people because our group, we really pushed each other. You know, like we really battled like at, you know, different gyms in the city or we didn't really have trainers like that, you know, so we will really just play pickup and just hang out. Like a lot of the guys like a, like Trevor and everybody, they went to Westchester, like Westchester had the best girls in the city. So, you know, we used to always try to 
hang out. But, you know, it was so, like, it was basketball. Like, if you went to Inglewood or you went to uh, Washington or Luzinger, man, like, us Hoopers, we would always get together and, you know, and push each other. And a lot of us in our uh, age bracket and our peers, like, we ended up being pro players. So um, the people that you see in my wedding from Trevor to – BD, it's like, man, we have a, a strong relationship that, you know, that, you know, I ended up meeting BD when I was 11, but I ended up meeting Trevor when I was 14. So um, we ended up just, you know, clicking. And that's just how, you know, LA Unified is. It's our, our hometown favorites. You know, we was able to do something and um, that really, and like Coach Brown would tell you, like, I don't, like, I don't know from his age group, but from ours, we was able to turn it to another level as becoming pros, like as a certain group. Like a lot of us became Craig Smiths, and like a lot of us in our generation became the pro players. I love that. I love that. I always say, show me your friends and I'll show you your future. Right. So obviously you're rolling with some pretty motivated, disciplined, like, hard working dudes because you don't just go to UCLA right. and be you don't get the nickname Lord in LA right, right? right. they don't just hand that one out it's not like Han you know right. like, if you're the Lord like you're gonna have to earn it and I'm sure everyone's coming at him talk to me a little bit about playing I mean were you guys playing mostly inside did you guys play some outdoors in LA or yeah. Yeah, we was playing it like we was playing outdoors a little bit, but mostly everything was, you know, inside. Like we go get, you know, like we would play at Sarah or we'd play or at this spot called Late Night on Fridays. And that'd be from eight to maybe twelve Friday nights. It used to be packed, like three, four courts, um, at Rolling Hills Prep. And, you know, that was a way for us to stay out, stay out the streets because around this time, man, like game banging was pretty crazy around this time as well. So not during the times when like how Coach Brown was like he is, but like, you know, this was more like, you know, it was turned up. So they came out with late night because a lot of people was getting killed. And I was like, yo, this would be a way for us to stay inside. Um, so now we just a lot of pickup, but like I tell the the guys who um, that are in our you know in our organization, like all the young guys, it's like you know you gotta push each other, you know, and that was a way for us to, to really get better, man. We really pushed each other, and there'll be days when I when I'm winning everything, and there'll be days when I'm losing. You feel me? But there was no friends in in between the lines. You know, we was only homies like really off the court. But the way how we treat each other, you'd be like, yo, these dudes are not cool because we was really trying to kill each other on the court. But off the court, it turned into, what's up? Okay, let's go to in and out oh, okay. Oh, let's go to Roscoe's. Oh, okay, well, well, like we, like, and that was the true brotherhood that we had. So, um, but now it was mostly, uh, we just hooping in the gym and just, you know, just, you know, trying new things. But, you know, I was happy that we was able to push each other. But you got to think, I'm the only one in the group that was under six feet. Like, so for me, like, they helped me tremendously, you know, and prepared me also for college as well. Um, And every summer that I was coming back home, like, you know, it was now I'm getting introduced to – Man, like from BD, now I'm with Chauncey Billups, and now we're Andre Miller, and this is in college, you know. So now I'm getting this information from these pros, and I'm like, oh wait, now if I when I come back to school, oh man, it's on because if I'm able to do that against them, I knew I had confidence I could come back to school and go to the West Coast Conference and really, you know, make a name for myself. And you did make a name for yourself. Two-time first-team all-conference, three-time all-conference. Um, just an incredible career there. Obviously, getting to be a part of that game when we beat the Zags. Woo! Um, ooh! Hey, yeah. hey, but you know, you want to know, and the thing is, Gonzaga wanted to redshirt me. Like, 
And I was like, red, like, how do you red shirt? Like around this time, I didn't really know like how red shirt, like what Coach Fuel was saying, like, like because they had Blake Stepp and they had uh, Winston, um, the, the guard, the buff guard, Winston somebody. And, um, and he was like, yo, trust me, like we're red shirt, whoop de whoop. And, but you know, my high school coach went to Gonzaga. You know, him and John Stockton was in the backcourt together. Dewan Hurt, rest in peace. So, um, so by me saying like, red shirt, are you crazy? Like I'm ready. So <laughs> going to, you know, so then going to Gonzaga, well, they had like a 32 game win streak and we ended up beating them. And that, and that was my last time beating them. But it was like, <laughs> man, <laughs> I got one. And I'm looking at Coach Few like, like, what? Red shirt? Like, come <laughs> on, man. But, uh, but now nah, that was just definitely, um, you know, a, a huge moment right there. But, you know, um, yeah, that was pretty huge. And you've had a lot of moments look- since then. You've had a lot of moments since then, obviously getting to play in the, the, with the Ukrainian national team. I yeah. see you on TV with the TBT. Um, you played for the Sacramento Kings. Talk about another one of your most memorable games. Oh, man. Out for me. Outside of college? Um, yeah, Oregon State double overtime that was a big victory we got when we beat the beaver right uh long beach state i came home remember coach brown long beach state came home made the buzzer you know and and all pyramid. my friends all my friends were, like came on the court i'm like how y'all on the court <laughs> uh <laughs> not uh beating oregon and oregon state you know being like portland being the team like you know like team of oregon my senior year uh you know, beating Nevada. You remember my sophomore year? We beat I do Nevada. remember that down there at their place in the snow. No, no, at, no. We beat Nevada at, at home. At, at home. Oh, Nevada. No, we were at home. We were at home. We were at home. When they they had, went to uh, Sweet 16 that year. No, or was it Elite Eight? Uh, Sweet 16. They went to Sweet oh, okay. 16 that year. I'm not going to argue yeah, with Coach Brown. He's we won, we won at New Mexico, you know, That's so. Yeah, so that was like. You know, in my sophomore year, that was the point where I was like, man, like, we making some noise. And um, that was when I was in the um, ESPN Magazine. And I was in the ESPN Magazine. I was like, oh, wow. Like, look what this turned to. But, you know, like, like one of the best things I would say, and like I said, I'm, I'm glad Coach Brown was on here. Like, I, I used to work out like crazy, bro. Like I, I used remember. to be at, at, at gym. I used to be in a gym. Like I used, my goal was to be Jules or you know be the, uh, be the Jules. Uh, Shout out know. Jules. <laughs> Shout out Jules, baby. <laughs> uh, like it got to the point where I don't know if Jules or one of the public safety officers gave me a, a key to the child's. You know. Um, because and that's and that was a whole as I look at life as being a, a relationship business like that's what it all is like my connection with Jules and like them seeing me in that gym with the toss back even during the soccer games or me like pounding Coach Brown like yo like we gotta work out or this and that like um. You know, or getting with Bino or Aaron Cowan or people in the city, like, to really, like, that was all I was about. Like, I have a goal. Coach Brown over here telling me how much money Kmart and all them making. <laughs> you feel me? And giving me these <laughs> stories about these pro players. He like, I'm like, man, I got to get to that level. You know, so um, I think in the preparation um, that, that I made sure that, you know, to to work hard and try to outwork everybody, you know, you know, to this day still have me playing. I'm going on my 15th year, so. Um, 15 years, Pooh. That's an incredible career, man. And I'm, I'm proud of you for sure. Not a lot of dudes still playing at your age under six foot. And let me, we were talking about this earlier before you hopped on. At what point 
do you lie and not lie, but fib and say you're shorter? Because we were saying like if you're five eight, like Jeremiah Dominguez, he was probably right. five seven, but he's like, I'm gonna list myself at five six. So then a five six dude gives you buckets. Are you really five eleven or how tall are you? No, I am really five nine and three quarters without shoes on. Okay, so with shoes, 5'11". So with shoes, give me 5'10". I, I take 5'10", you know, like, um, but when people try to say you, I'm like, man, I'm not no six feet. No, I'm not. I'm 5'10". Like, give me every, I, I take that. Yeah, you know? for sure. Own it. Yeah, hard over height, you know, but um, even saying JD is 5'8", it's crazy. Because <laughs> JD... <laughs> But so it's like five, 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 six. <laughs> He's not very big, but, <laughs> but that's he kind of a trivia. Drop. No, no, but JD, but JD was amazing. Mm -hmm. Like he was amazing, and J JD's work ethic was incredible. Like mm -hmm. by once, once he came to the school, I knew I had to turn up another another notch because. You know, he's a hometown favorite. You know, he's player of the year, this and that. So him coming in, I had to, like, get on another gear. Like, I'm not about to let nobody come take my spot, you know, like, at all. But that turned me up. But the thing is, his connection to the city, we everywhere. Even when he had that, that four-door Honda, you feel <laughs> I me? Mean? Like, I we used to that. be through the city oh, working yeah. out, especially when D. Coop came as well. Mm -hmm. Like, we was in the city. I'm trying to go to, where we at? Okay, Concordia, are we going there? Are we going to Lewis and Clark? Okay, cool. Or are we going to Portland State? Or, okay, we're going to Salvation Art? Man, I'm hoping. Like, that was, that was, all, that was all I was about. Like, of course, I, I was there for school, but my mind was to be a pro player, man. Like You always you had know, that like, mindset, and you, you did get a degree, right? You're a college grad, yes. right? Shout out, yes. congratulations. UP's no yes. joke. Father Art Wheeler, you. thank you, baby. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> get Father Art Wheeler his shout out, for sure. I love that you said preparation, Pooh, because there's nobody that worked harder for this, and that's why I'm so happy for you. Let's play a little trivia. Anybody that can name, let's start naming some people in the chat box that are under six foot tall that played in the NBA. So obviously you can go Muggsy Bugs, Spud Webb. So those are the two kind of smallest guys, but anybody else that's watching still, Nate Robinson, good job, James. Nate Robinson's hard over height. Isaiah Thomas. I don't know about Earl Boykins. Earl no way, Boykins, no, Earl. Michigan? Or I was Michigan's out there playing with him in Eastern Tuesday. Michigan. He was, short, but man, he, was, he was bucket. Eastern yeah. Michigan, yeah. Michael Adams. Mm -hmm. Michael Adams was cold. Tim Hardaway, I'll say Tim Hardaway. Tim Hardaway Jr. Yeah. No, no, Tim Hardaway. Tim Hardaway. Tim Hardaway, the, the killer crossover? Yes. How tall is Tim Hardaway? Tim Hardaway's like probably, I don't know, see, he might be my height. J.J. Barrera, that was a good one. Somebody said J.J. Go. Yeah. Um, Not a name dropper. I like that. That's an honest answer. Yeah. Um, Man, I should really know everybody, but uh, Kyle Lowry, how big is he? He's got to be Kyle Lowry, like six one, six two. Um, Man, this, game's yeah, tough. But, this game's tough, and that's why you're such a legend, Pooh, is because you played for the Kings. Talk to me a little bit about going from being all everything in college to being overseas and playing, and then coming back and being the you, your numbers were a lot more impressive in the NBA than mine were in college, <laughs> but you still took a different role in the NBA than you did in college. How was that? Just always having to be ready, never really knowing whether you're going to get five minutes or 30 minutes. Right. In the NBA? Yeah, in the NBA. So, you know, one of the best things about my experience, like we were just talking about preparation, but once I, you know, you know, I did five years of NBA Summer League, um, went to all type of mini camps, played in Euro League or in Euro Cup. But when it was time, it was when it was my time to go to Port, uh, the Sacramento. You know who was the head coach when I was with Sacramento? Adelman. Nope. Um, 
It was it was Pepperdine's coach. Oh, Westfall. Yes. Paul so, Westfall. So imagine going to like Sacramento and the coach is very familiar with me. Yeah. You know, so that was like a blessing right there. Like, okay, like he really know my game. He already know that I could score this and that, but I'm showing him another pool because at this time we had Tyreek Evans, who's a scoring point guard, and we had Baina Udry, who was a, a like he could score. So I knew my role was going to be different because, um, and I, you know, I was cool with it because now I am basically like backup third point guard, you know. So now I'm at this point of hold on, right quick of showing like, okay, I gotta be different from Reek. What does a Reek do? Reek doesn't push the ball and get everybody involved like that. You know, no, you know, no not like he's like a great player. He's a great player, but I gotta do something different. Like for me to get on the game. I have to be that energy guy. So, you know, finally getting to the NBA and mind you, I'm 28 at this time, I believe, 27, 28. And I come in with DeMarcus Cousins, who just finished one year at Kentucky, and Hassan Whiteside. You know, so he, I think he maybe did a year or two, maybe, in college. Where did Hassan Whiteside go? That's a good question. You remember what college Hassan Whiteside went to? Was it Marshall? Hassan Whiteside, Marshall Thundering Herd. Was it Marshall? I think it was Marshall. Right. So going to that situation was, you know, but mind you, my first year, at, my first year when I left, I don't remember, I didn't even mention this. When I left Portland, when I graduated Portland, got into the pre draft. Um, worked out for some, worked out for like 16 teams at this one, at this one training facility. Sacramento called me. This is 2006. Sacramento, who didn't have a coach, so Jeff Petrie was doing the workouts. I killed the workout. Jeff Petrie called my agent, like, can he stay and do another workout? And I'm like, okay, like, I'm not tripping, like, killed that next workout. Then right before the draft, they had me come again. So I worked out three times for Sacramento during, the, during my whole, like, going into my, you know, rookie season. Um, killed it. They said, yo, if you don't get drafted, which I knew I wasn't, Sacramento and the Lakers was the only teams I, like, really worked out for, like, going to their facilities. they like, you don't play – if you don't get drafted, you can play on our summer league team. I'm like, cool, because nobody didn't really know me like that. You know, like, nobody didn't know my game. Um, I was just really known really on the West Coast. So Portland didn't have a winning season. We never had a winning season when I was there. So it was, I didn't have no – and we always got knocked out in the first round of the conference tournament. So it was no way for me to – experience the NCAA tournament or anything like that. But by going to Sacramento then, having a great summer league, getting signed to go to training camp, I get cut. You know, then I go to the D League, of course, and I do the Europe. So by the time they see me again, I'm like, oh, wow. And they gave me my guarantee I just looked at how things work. And Jeff Petrie was still the general manager. And Wayne Cooper. And who? It was Wayne daughter. Cooper's daughter. Andrea. Andrea Cooper. <laughs> you feel me? Who went to University of Port? But it's, it's just how life works. You know, if like. People don't know. If you don't know, I was the vice president of the Black Student Union at University of Portland. Because yes. these guys were like, hey, we need some help with the student government or the Black Student Union. So I showed up in Andrea Cooper. Yep. She was the one. <laughs> and so I ran for Black 
student union VP. Right. And you had, sure did. We had some Bro. people were like, is this guy really going to be our VP, <laughs> this white dude? But that's where I'm talking about basketball is a unifying sport, right? I mean, right. bring people together from South Central LA, from Southern Oregon to right. Gislan Sima. To- Gislan Sima to Andreas. Andreas Goldman. <laughs> Brian, but, uh, Kim, Brian Kim and Soderberg. Come on, but Soderberg with the with the uh, with the wooden van. Uh, what? what type of car did he have? He had like a the wooden station wagon. Wheel, station wagon with the wood on the side. <laughs> and Brian Kim was always driving his car. Why was Brian Kim driving Soderberg's car? But well, why did Brian Kim have so much bounce? so much balance and <laughs> could not learn a play i was trying to learn the scout team and teach him scout team and he couldn't learn our plays let alone right. learn scout team plays Man. right yeah. but now sacramento but yeah just doing that time in sacramento was amazing like to finally you know get to that moment you know of like being an nba player because i'm like really hanging out you know with them every summer you know, in my like, and being part of like the LA guy, you know, being in the NBA, it was just an amazing experience, man. Like, but you know, uh, then of course the lockout happened that that next year. Then of course, like I had to go back to Europe. Then I got to China. I haven't left China since. It's been like eight years since I've been to China. So. And you're killing it in China, um, doing big things. Obviously, there's some big names over there. I saw a picture. Let's see if I can pull this one. I can hear you. Can you guys hear me? I can hear you. Let's see. Can you see this? Can you guys see this? I want to show this picture of you. And one of the, let's see, images. Look at these photos. Look at this guy's smile. Look at this guy. <laughs> Look at this guy. Look at this and that guy. was and I was going into my rookie year, bro. That, that was, was your right first there. Year. I was like, I'm so happy to be here. He's here. <laughs> like I, made I, it. I have a jersey on. Is this a summer league Nuggets jersey? No, that's so that was in the D League with the Colorado 14ers, and one of our affiliates was um the Nuggets. So it was like Nuggets night where we was playing in the in the, um in their jerseys. There's one. Wow. Of, look at some of these memories. You got some, talk a little about this one. Family. <coughs> EJ. Oh my gosh, man. So that's my wife, Siobhan, uh, with EJ and Ethan, man. Like you know, like my family right there. I would do anything in the world, you know, for my family, man. Like, um, shout out to the photographer, um, Porter House, LA. So if you need, if you're ever in LA, you need a photographer, you gotta make sure you go to uh, uh, Porter House, LA. But uh, family, man, that's everything. That's Coach amazing. Brown taught me. Yeah, Coach Brown taught me that about family as well. Like. I uh, remember, you know, Kennedy was just born. Wow, right there, that is the four generations. So, because you tower my, over your dad, right, Pooh? Right, but my grandpa, it was, it was like six one. He's a giant. Right, <laughs> and, and, the thing, and, and the thing is, and rest in peace. He passed away like uh, in May, um, and he was like. Uh, 92. He lived a good life, man. He left, built an empire, built, left a legacy for sure. Right. And that's, that's EJ in my lap. So he's Eugene Jeter the fourth. So that was like that's the generation. E- that's Eugene the first, Eugene the second, the third, and the, and fourth. the fourth. Right. That's awesome. So I was so thankful, you know, for us to, you know, have that moment right there. That was <clears throat> the four generations what about this one there's and your dad did he have the same did he go by poo too no he go by gene gene okay we love yeah, so like, free throws did you ever hear we that love free throws. <laughs> we love free throws uh, why because they free, so they imagine, free. Him, 
Imagine him learning that in Mandarin and saying that at the games. Oh, I bet he did. He he yelled that every game. I love that. But uh, yeah, that's of course my sister, who's the fast, still the fastest. You guys don't know <laughs> who Jetter's not the fastest in the family. Maybe, but she's the with a ball. Woman. With a ball, I am. <laughs> but put him on the track in a hundred meter dash. Who do you Man, think? Man, good luck. <laughs> You're not getting off those blocks like Carmelita. <laughs> <laughs> no way, you know, but uh, but not nah, so that's my sister that I was in London at the Olympics. You got to go to London? To, yeah, I went in 2012. My family and I, we went to London. To, we had, had to see it. You know, we had to be a part of that experience. Um, and you know what's so, like, one thing I learned from my sister is um, she did, she had the 100 and she came in second, I believe. But the two? We, she couldn't even enjoy it because the, the next day she had to get ready for the 200. So I was like, and then she did the 200, couldn't really enjoy her medal, and then she had the four by one. So I was like, yo, when are you going to celebrate? She said, I don't have time to celebrate. You know, you, you do it. You got that night to like celebrate whatever, and that next day is a whole new day in mission. And I was like, dang, is that how really it's supposed to be? Like, you know, you, you conquer that that one day and you just move on. And because you have so much you have something else to accomplish, like when are you supposed to like really celebrate moments? But what's the answer to that one? When do you celebrate Pooh? Uh, and for basketball, yeah, it's just really like that day, like after the game, or, it in. you feel me? Then the next day is a whole nother day. You feel me? Like you so moving on. Oh, wow. So that picture right there, that was my first year playing in China. So mind you, Marbury's team won the championship the year before. So they was going for a back to the back and right this moment right here man like we did not really like vibe with each other because i'm the new guy into china uh my team was last and now we're like tied for first we're going to the playoffs and we ended up sweeping marbury team and Marbury, you know, around this time, this is 2012. This is 2012, 2013 uh, season. And that's when I really made a name for myself, as in like really beat Marbury. I was basically like player of the year. And he told me after that game or that summer, because he used to come, he used to get out of the house in LA. He said, bro, never leave Shandong, you know, and I ended up being with Shandong for like four seasons. Um, and the, uh, once I got to China and did that, I wasn't even thinking about the NBA no more like that, really. Um, I was just trying to focus on like, you know, at that at this, you know, China outside the NBA, that you know, they pay the most. So um, I ended up, you know, definitely making a name around this time. But Marbury to this day is one of my mentors. Uh, we talk all the time, but uh, you know he really helped me by uh, by me out playing him in that in that series. But he really um, to this day continues to give me the wisdom that I need. That was the first All Star game. So as you imagine, like I went to China and didn't cut none of my hair. Like I'm like. I'm going to just grow my hair out, grow my beard. Nobody's not going to touch it. So that's why I look like that. You don't so have a barber you could trust over there, huh? No, my, I'm not letting nobody touch this hair of mine. So look, I ended up being like really a popular like person in Shandong. So now I come back home. I'm in Vegas. My hair is cut off. I look normal now. I'm in Vegas and I, you know, and um, it's a, I see a lot of people, uh, a lot of Chinese people, and I'm like, oh wow, okay. I said I'm asking the the, the tourist person, the guy, and I'm like, where are they from? 
And he, he's like, they're from uh, G9, like Shandong, China. I'm like, oh, that's my home. I'm like, ni hao, ni hao to everybody. They looking at me like, who is that? Like, who is that? Because now I have a haircut. They're like, who is that? And they look close and I'm telling them, I'm like, yo, like I play for Shandong. They like, and a couple people said, Jet. And I'm like, it's me. They like, Jet. <laughs> because I'm not looking like my character. Like they know me as wild hair and beard. And now they seeing me in the summer in Vegas and I have my all my hair cut off. They was like, no, we like, we like uh long hair. You get long hair. And I'm like, oh, okay, like. Uh, I'm I'm vibing with you. I can't cut my hair no more in China. That 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 it's hard for it's, we were talking about that last week. You can't. It's tough to cheat on a barber, right? No way. Can't do it. Uh, like All those medium I shorts one, you got on there. I have one barber. Bro, so, yep. So so at this time, I I ended up being for the CBA league. I ended up being like their first um first like foreigner. And the league to sign with Leaning, so you are you had an endorsement with Leaning, right? Yeah, I, I was yeah well, for five years. I had like my own like player edition shoe. Like it was a a, a great partnership. That's um, awesome. Talking about haircuts, sure. let me see if I can pull this one up because we had a picture of us together. And I don't know if you remember, but we went over to Coach Holton's house right before oh, picture day. This, we went over to Coach Holton's house right before picture day, and they uh, said, okay, here you go. Here's your photo, and let's see if I can pull it up here. Let's see. How do I do this? I can't wait to see this one. This one right here, Pooh. Is it showing? Not there yet. Let's see. Let me try again here. Oh, wow, man. Michael Holton, I had my hair long, kind of like this photo. And I was like, Coach Holton, can you line me up too? He's like, I've never cut a white guy's hair. Coach Holton did your hair? <laughs> Coach Holton lined me up. I don't know if he called that lining up, but he kept, he just kept going. I'm like, dude, it's pretty short right now. It's pretty short right now. And he just kept going. And it was you, Donald, and he's trying to cut us all up. And then it was right before picture day, and I was like, man, I should have gone to my barber. But this photo was <laughs> taken. Real. I think Donald and Coop might have been in that photo with us. Hey, bro, Donald, no, if that was, that's our freshman year, right? Donald, bro, ended up cutting his hair, his own hair, the night before. I said, bro, watch me have pictures tomorrow, bro. And he's in the mirror. I said, my dude, what are you doing? Like, you wish you had just went to Dante. Dante was like our barber in China. I mean, uh, in Portland. In Portland, uh, yeah. Yeah, so I'm like, bro, what are you doing, man? He ended up trying to cut his own hair, man. Donald, Donald and I have some amazing stories at that <laughs> school, man. Like, I freaking love, I freaking love that school to death. Portland was like, we had a lot of good memories. Love, I really tell people that's my second home. Like, um, just that whole time and and vibe, like from eight, you gotta remember, like from, and and like, imagine coming from LA and going, and like, which my school was like basically all black and Mexicans, you know, Hispanics, I should say. And then going to University of Port Portland and it's the opposite. You know, and that was one of the main things that I did love and that I was able to experience a type of culture shock was that was I was able to, you know, mix in and like really vibe with everybody from all ethnicities. And not one time and I tell people not one time to at, that I've been at that school that I ever felt the red tin or whatever for the color of my skin. You feel me? Everybody was. It was nothing but love and respect at that school. Like, and I tell people that and I was happy that I was able to come on and like meet people from all ethnicities, man. Like that was the joy of my, and, but imagine being like the only black in the, in the classroom allowed me to be 
playing for the Ukraine national team. You know, like everything sets up everything. Like, or me going out to Ukraine or playing in Spain. Like, it was like, dang, you wonder why you're prepared to, you know, like, to go to certain things for certain moments. It's so true, right, though? That's, you never know. And that's why you treat people to respect is you never know when that person's going to come back into your life. Right. You know, man, never, it's no favoritism. I've always been about that. Like, there's no need. Like, so what? So what that person is there right now? That don't mean he's going to be there to, like that tomorrow. Man, I always read. I tell the I tell the young boys now, like, man, I knew everybody's name from the uh, from the cove to the commons to whatever. You feel me? Like, that's just me. Like, I I'm always been that person to, like, yo, like I'm gonna treat you like you Michael Jordan. I don't care, bro. Like you, let's rock out. Like, but that's and that turns into. A, a great relationship you know um talk a little bit about the tbt the most recent basketball experience everybody's kind of been everyone was craving i was jonesing for live sports you know and so when <laughs> i came back man talk to me a little bit about the bubble talk to us about what it was like to be in that and playing in the right. tbt well the tbt was a you know and i told them I, they did a great job um being in a bubble, like really, even like, even being in China, like, see what I experienced in China definitely helped me for the bubble because when I was in China, I had to go through a two week quarantine for not leaving my hotel room. Like I couldn't leave my hotel room 14 days, bro. Like nobody could have come in. I had to get, uh, you know, my temperature checked, I had to go through tests. Um, luckily, my, my team was able to leave me food, but those 14 days in that hotel room was an experience. You know, like it was straight lockdown. But luckily, I don't watch no TV when I'm really at home, so I was able to catch up on a lot of shows. What do you watch? What, to, what, like, Netflix or what were you watching over there? Oh, I, Netflix and chill. <laughs> that was me. <laughs> uh, watching just all Americans to uh, Queen Queen of the South to uh, uh, Money Heist to. Uh, What's the uh, Tiger King? I watched that. You watched it all, man. (laughs) Yeah, like really, like because I really couldn't, I couldn't leave, I couldn't go into the hallways. So when I exit off of that and off of quarantine and start, you know, practicing being with the team, so you know, I was able to go back to a, a like a normal life. So fast forward to the bubble, I'm like, man, like I'm able to leave the whole my I'm as long as I'm able to leave my hotel room and I could walk and in the hallway <laughs> like it was just a normal thing I just couldn't leave the hotel like even if Postmates was coming in or Uber Eats we can't go get our food somebody has to go and bring us the food from outside but uh, but the TBT did an amazing job with that making sure that we stay getting tested uh, um, the, just being able to play you know, just five on five, that was just an amazing experience. Without fans, um, it wasn't It wasn't different. I looked at it more like a close scrimmage. You know, we used to have close scrimmages in college. You know, when you just go on and just no fans. And um, But knowing that millions of people was watching on ESPN was a different feeling, too. It's like that. There was like, a lot of people oh watching, Oh, my God. Man. You know, mm-hmm. so... And you had a I hell of a game there and dropped oh, yeah, 22. My Twitter was going crazy. You <laughs> feel me? Like, every day, like, what? Look at it. But, but the joy of it was seeing videos of my sons screaming, Go, Daddy! Go, Daddy! Go. And I'm like, what? And like, I'm like, did you see me? Dad, I saw you on TV, man. Like, so that right there was like the, the joy. You feel me? I'm like, but also, 
the ones that I am mentoring um, that are up next, um, they were sending me messages like, hey, bro, like, you really know what you're talking about. <laughs> you know, so I was able to, I was thankful for able to, like, show them that my dude, like, all you got to do is listen to me. You know, like, so I'm, I'm glad I'm able to continue to lead by example, but um, Let me ask about the Elam for, ending. What do you think about the Elam ending? Talk to me a little bit about that. Elam ending, bro, is it's a great for entertaining, but only thing I'm going to say is, like, in our situation, when we lost on the buzzer, uh, well, it's not the buzzer, but, you know, he hit the three. So we're up by one. It's 65-64. Now, the Elam ending, bro, is exciting, but it can also – it's just how you strategize. So we should have just closed off the three – and let them just take a layup. So it's a little practice and bad, bad defense. You feel me? Like, that's the only thing. It's like, man, make them just shoot a two. Like, if it's really a clock, we're really locking down. You know, like, so if it was like a clock, like a fourth quarter situation, like, we're re- like playing to like the buzzer ends, like zero, zero, like with a time our defense wouldn't have been like, like that. But with the Elam ending, it's like, yo, just let them make a two so we could get another shot to win. But you but didn't. We didn't. You feel me? Like, he ended up goddamn making the, the three and winning. You know, we was in the final four. So, um, like I said, it's exciting. But uh, it could be bad basketball as well, too. I feel that. We got a question. We're going to get Coach Choi. We're going to unmute you, Coach. Highline Community College's assistant coach is going to hop on. You just give a question okay. here. So, Coach, you should be unmuted. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Hey, Poo, I appreciate you uh, coach. sharing, so sharing everything with us. Um, so, you mentioned playing late night at Rolling Hills Prep, and uh, Harvey Kitani, who's the head coach out there, was at Fairfax previously. He mentioned on a Dan Dickow pod recently saying that um, in the 90s and, the, and into the early 2000s, um, there was a crazy influx of talent. And with the uh, uh, cost of living going up and gentrification, he's saying that the talent isn't as uh, deep as it used to be. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Man, he's exactly right. And the talent, because of the finance, you know where they ended up going? Bro, they ended up moving to Inland Empire's Palmdale area, San Bernardino, they started moving like outside of LA County because it, it was cheaper, you know? So now you would see a lot of players outside LA County being better than the ones that, that are from like representing LA because of the whole financial situation. So a lot of our talent, um, we got some good kids, you know, but we got some pretty good kids, but, um that are starting to you know get back to normal especially the class of 2022 like our incoming junior class bro is so fire it's ridiculous but um but if you even if you look at the college guys you will see like i did a list of like the top 10 scores from socal the people that are on that list are basically outside la county you know even for assists and rebounding so um i brought that up um, the other day to a couple people, but and it was like you know why is because people are starting to move uh, to the places that are cheaper. But uh, I agree with Coach Katani, man. Like, yeah, the level of basketball right now, um, you know, starting to be run by like you know people outside of LA County. Thanks, Coach. Good, good question. I want to read this because this says a lot about you, Poo. This is a uh a piece of scripture make an ambition to lead a quiet life you should mind your own business and work with your hands just as we told you so that your daily life may win the respect of outsiders and so that you will not be dependent on anybody all right bro like make your ambition to lead a quiet life to mind your own business you ask God your father continue to bless the works of your hands so that you will continue to win the respect of outsiders and not be dependent on anybody. Like, those are like, and like, I'm a spiritual person. You know, uh, 
I don't think even people knew that even before games, um, Donald and I would go, because Donald's dad was a preacher, uh, is a preacher. But before games, Donald and I would go into the chapel and just chill. Like, bro, we would go into the chapel before games and just chill out, you know. Um, um, we would go to Bible study, you know, that was on campus. Even like when it was at row housing, we would go, man, and just, you know, connect. So my thing was, you know, even finding a church home, you know, in Portland. Um, I think it was Pastor Hardy. Um, they used to say, you're in the right place. Like I remember so that. Like, We'd go sometimes. And, you man, remember? You know I remember you going, and I was the white guy in there. And <laughs> But everyone's up worshiping and singing yeah. and dancing. And I loved it, yeah. man. There was a lot of, lot of soul. So, so the thing is, like, Brand, that's why when, like, anytime we talk or you hit, like, Bro, you, we was, man, we bros, you feel me? So, and you made sure that you didn't, like, you was connected, you know? So we going, but with even, like, just meditating and, and with these scriptures, and I, I read, like, the Bible just to find these type of jewels and just to make sure that, you know, like, I just continue to, like, mind my own business, you know? Just whatever happens, you know, it happens, but. I need to lead quietly. I don't have to go out there and show like, oh, I'm poo jet. Like, no, man, I am just like, I could do that quietly, even if it is to fashion, to whatever. Like, I don't need to boast or brag or nothing, but I need to make sure that I'm never tired of doing the right things, you know, and, and making sure that I'm working hard with my hands and, not be not being dependent on anybody but God, you know. So by me being so spiritual and just trying to, you know, that has definitely, you know, made like built to who I am today. And I tell people a lot, a lot of times, it's like, yo, like, you know, I'm just happy that, you know, God had this part, you know, of the scripture in my life to be a pro for this long, you know, to, you know, be married and this and that. Like, I'm not perfect, but, but you know, I just try to just move a certain way where, you know, I'm just, you know, keeping my eyes on the prize. Never tired of doing the right thing. I love that, that's, man. Bro, um, that's, that's another scripture in the Bible. Never being tired, yeah. never being weary of doing the right that's thing. thing. Giving, giving thanks in all circumstances, no matter what happens, you give thanks. It's like, okay, you're going through a storm. You're like, oh, man, like. It's like, man, okay, like, I'm going through it. I'm going to find a way, you know, where it's going to be some sunshine, you know. Like, man, just give thanks no matter what's going on in life, man. Like, but I'm not able to – I'm trying to still figure out that aspect when it comes to, like, somebody dying that's, like, real close, you know. But, you know, you just got to just let God do what he do, you know, and never question it and just keep – you know, marching on, but um, it's just, a, it's a lot of jewels in that word, man, like, that I'm, like, really steady and just make sure that I keep feeding my spirit with some, you know, with the word of God, so. That's awesome, man. Well, let me talk to us a little bit about Laced, and then <laughs> we can give some shout outs to your boys, but talk to us a little bit about your entrepreneurial side, about how you started your own business. I know it's the only black owned shoe store in LA with the Nike contract. Is that right? Right. 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 Well, actually man. as I'm doing, yeah, like, bro, like, so my, my grandpa, Eugene Jetter, of course, like, um, he had like his own barbershop, you know, so he had his business. So then my dad, you know, it was his, then he started having his businesses, you know, then he had his record store. He had a music store for like, man, like 25 years called Hey Love. So I already knew like, okay, when it gets to my turn, even, okay, I ended up being this pro basketball player. I knew that I had to have my own business as well. And my dad used to always tell me, and my parents actually, so I was telling me like, find things that you love to do. Like, like what else? What else are you into? You know, back in school, high school, I was best dressed, you know, so I always had a, like a thing for fashion, you know, um, 
I don't even think you guys would know, but Baron, I could share this. Baron Davis used to send me clothes every every year to Portland. He used to send me a box of clothes from Rock Aware or Nietzsche. Like that would be like our back to school clothes, you know, like um, Timberlands like, and everything. You feel me? Like, but then I would go to the Lloyd Center. <laughs> Lloyd, shout out the Lloyd Center. <laughs> No and, problem. Uh, give me some cool Sean John. No, but uh, <laughs> but He's not like always Sean John. <laughs> but I always had a thing for fashion, you know. So, um, ended up opening up my own like the shoe clothing store. Uh, how I ended up getting the Nike account was through, uh, yes, Anichi for real, <laughs> bro. Well, we had it all. I got introduced to Steve Madden in Portland and all that. Okay. But uh, I ended up getting a Nike account because of Coach Holden's best friend. So Coach Holden's best friend is Ron Walden. Ron Walden was the one that was giving the account for Nike. So, but I also had a relationship because of my sister. You know, she was, you know, of course, one of the biggest women Nike athletes at the time. So, um relationship business it's all about relationships it's you know definitely you got to know the right people but once you know the right people you bring that right information to them for it's everything that makes sense so um and it, so when coach Holden connected me with ron walden um when i first asked he said nah like you're not ready yet like i just opened up the store you feel me like he was like nah you're not ready yet um but you need to do a lot of things in the community. Like you need to be all about the community. And once I figured that out, I was like, dang, how can I involve the community? community? Um, my friends, huh? My friends got this brand called Trap House Clothing. And Trap, T-R-A-P meant to rise above poverty. I said, dang, that's why people do trap, like to rise above poverty. That's amazing. So I had to figure out an acronym for the store. And um, I remember I had an uh, interview with the source, and I was like, L.A. I said, Lace got L.A. And the reason for is for, like, you know, in the beginning for a reason. I was like, okay. Once I do the acronym, it'll be like Los Angeles something. So um and uh, messing around, messing around. I said, dang, Los Angeles creates endless dreams. And if, if you think about LA, like people really move to LA to, you know, make their dreams come true. You know, and LA is the land of opportunity, just like how New York is when New York creates endless dreams. So once I started doing a lot and involving like all ethnicities in LA and telling this LA story, that's when they was like, yo, you're ready. So then, as soon as we get the account and we're going to meetings, and I'm like, dang, like, okay, I'm seeing all these other ethnicities. Like, where are my, where are we at? Where, where are my peoples at? And um, come to find out, it's like, dang, like, right now we're the only black owner in LA with a Nike account. So it's like, oh, okay, so that type of movement definitely brought a lot of energy in once people started figuring it out and knowing that. But uh, but that it was just like I didn't I didn't know I, I we was getting ourselves into that moment like at all we didn't know that but like once you just do something you never know what attaches itself to it and I was like dang like that's kind of crazy but hey but uh but ended up but you know what um we're starting to find out like some different people it's like one like in Palm that like it's like. One far out that we know that's uh, another owner who I'm trying to get, you know, in contact with. So, um, but it's just, it's just a special moment, you know, just for uh, kids in the inner city to like, you know, it's, it's like you could do basketball, but it's so much other stuff you could, you know, accomplish in the world. You know, here's so. one I always say, here's one I love that I think you'll appreciate. There's two O's. It's good, not God. In basketball, there's two O's. Good, not God. Oh, wow. I'm going to need that one, bro. Yeah, basketball's good. It's not God. And that's something so many people put it on the pedestal and try to worship basketball. 
and that ball is life. I mean, it's a big part of your life. It's a big part of my life, but I'd rather be a good husband and a good father, right? Than a good basketball, anything. Right. And bro, I had to tell people like ball is not life. Like bro, like just look at the world we in now. Like man, right. like ball is not life. It's so much more. Like I, I tell, I tell the kids now, like you can't get in the gym. Like what, what? Like so, figure out something else that you need to do in life. You know, like you work hard and snap, but you, as you can see, ball is not life right now. You know, it's on pause. <laughs> you like, um, but uh, now that's now. Please, you gotta text me that too when we. Yeah, go. I'll send you that, man. Well, hey, I really appreciate you joining us, man. Um, definitely. And I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry. I know we at eight thirty. <laughs> <laughs> but how life is, man, like, I ended up, we had, like, a family meeting, bro. We had a family meeting, uh, like, my cousins and everybody. And then I'm looking, I'm like, it's 8.05. Well, it was, like, 20.05. I'm on military time. And oh, I'm man. like, man, it's 20.05. Man, we got to go get my, we got to go get EJ. And then once we got EJ, then it was like, I'm hungry. And it's like, of course you're hungry. So we have to go to El Pollo Loco. I'm like, dang, man. Like, they always want to eat again, don't they? Oh, it doesn't stop. That's why Coach Brown, like, I'm like, man, like, Coach Brown was feeding us oh, every weekend. That's a violation, man. Oh, um, oh, no, he wasn't. My bad. He wasn't doing that. <laughs> they didn't give – the walk-ons never got the invite over to the crib. <laughs> but I, I, but the thing is, like, man, like how Coach, man, like, man, Coach Brown, man, like, like he made everything smooth for me when I'm at, when I'm out there or when I was in Portland. Like, hey, we were part of the number one recruiting class in the West Coast Conference that year. I don't know if Dustin Geddes, Andreas Gallman, oh my Ron Wilson, God. Pooh Jetter, yeah, Minor. B minor. B minor? Yeah, I don't know how much the walk on counted, but we were part of it. We were a team. We're all in this together, bro. Who was a part of that? <laughs> oh, it's For a team. Sure. It's not about me. No, that's awesome, <laughs> man. Well, hey, I really do appreciate you, Pooh. Um, the X Factors laptop died on him so he texted me and said he apologized for the missing the end of this thing but i really do appreciate you poo checking in with us and always being a guy that i can count on really appreciate your humbleness your humility and the gratitude you show and i've always just respected you as a person and a friend so definitely looking forward to Staying in touch, man. I'm excited for you to get back doing your thing. And I love watching you play. I, I like beating you when we practice against each other, which didn't happen. And what? You enjoy beating me and what? Um, I'm, I'm still thinking. I'm, I mean, I heard you. I heard you the first time. So I'm, still, I'm still thinking. Um, I'm still thinking if, if we had a PlayStation, March Madness. The original PlayStation Tecmo Bowl. Um, <laughs> I don't. I don't know what I can say. I beat you at, but I'm thinking. I'm gonna think about that. And I'm gonna get you on. Yeah, me, me too. Drink on <laughs> Maybe it was. Cold, maybe it was cold points. I did have the extra cold points <laughs> at the end of the semester. <laughs> this guy was always hitting me up for those cold points, man. Oh, man. <laughs> Good times, man. Good times. For sure. Well, hey, I really do appreciate it, Pooh. It's good connecting with you. Reach out anytime. If there's ever anything I can do to help you, man, definitely don't hesitate to reach out. I'm going to go ahead and unmute. If anyone wants to say what's up to Pooh, you guys can say hey before he heads out. So everybody's unmuted. Again, Pooh, really appreciate you, man. Pulling for you always. Man, thank you, bro. Man, thank you. Thank you, everybody. Like I said, I'm so sorry for me. Uh, getting on so late. Last time I saw it, when, when I checked in with you earlier, you was uh, outside on the you was outside on the patio. It something. got dark uh, on me. It got dark. I on know me. it did. I know, but uh, thank you guys for everything. Like, be minor. You already know. Anytime you need anything from me, bro. Like, I'm here, bro. Like, I and I know that's you, like it's the same love going. You know, from you. Like, I already know that's the same love for you too. So. Um, I hope Always. everybody has an amazing uh, week, you know, um, 
and like let's continue to you know move the culture forward stay positive worry about what you can control trying to get better a little bit try to get a little better every day right Fact. good i think Pont got back on Pontilius, you get back on here yeah i am back my laptop died at probably the worst time possible oh good bro <laughs> but hey we make it work I'm back on the phone <laughs> For real. let's go <laughs> all right well we're gonna go ahead and stop the recording so thanks for joining us it's been real it's been fun it's been real fun peace out stay safe take care of yourselves and each other real talk